everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Shoe Podcast, the only secret podcast that is trying this again because the computer's having a little trouble tonight. But I'm your co-host, Ryan Landry. I'm your co-host, Tanner Young. Hey, we, we all deserve a break. Listen, we took a break for two weeks, and the computer did too, and we're all just yeah. trying to recalibrate to getting back to this way of life, I would say. He said, it's a Monday. Try again. There you go. Check back in tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Thank you. Just like Garfield, my computer hates Mondays. Hey, lasagna. Lasagna. Hey. <sighs> so, yeah, we took a little two-week break, but it's nice to be back here. We uh, took some time off because we just finished filming the last interview, which uh, if everything goes according to plan and this interview comes out, not interview, this episode comes out on this Friday that we're thinking it is. So, like, if you're listening to this on September 22nd, and everything again goes according to plan. One week from today, you'll be listening to the interview, which is a really good one. We had a really fun time with it. Yeah, it was a, it was a, I feel fancy. Oh, you feel why. fancy from it? Okay, just fancy was the how the I vibe. Fancy, okay. yeah, fancy. It was fancy, but it was down to earth at the same time. I would say, you know, I think so. Like okay. a, like a tuxedo T-shirt, but like a fresh one. There you go. Like a Chrysler 300. Perfect analogy. Was that the model? Was that the correct model? The 300? Yeah. 100%. Okay. All right. 100%. A 300, 300%. All right. Put down Thank the fresh you. cut strawberries. He's getting silly. He's getting silly. Um, I think this is going to be a little bit more of a relaxed, chill episode because as you and I were discussing before we started rolling, I had a pretty long weekend and I don't know about, I don't know how, yeah. how was your weekend? Not as hectic as yours, not as crazy yeah. as yours. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty boring. Very suburb. Okay. Eh, nothing wrong with that, though. Yeah, it's like but, sublime, but if they retired. <laughs> well, they did, and then they were sublime with Rome for like a little period there, and it was like, come on, guys, time to hang it up. Yeah, come on now. Maybe it's keep time to practice up. Santeria. I don't know. Two for two. He's going to keep it going. Hey. Keep it going. Never stop. So admittedly this episode outline i think we had lined up for last week when these topics were a little bit more hot off the presses but better late yeah. than never and i think it's still some interesting stuff to discuss um and kind of some more overarching questions rather than you know having to necessarily be about current events here that's what i'd say i think so as well so uh we didn't say it at the top of the episode but if you're listening to this on spotify you probably could also be watching it on spotify or if you're listening on apple Podcasts and you want to watch it Come join us over at youtube.com forward slash at shoe podcast. And if you just got here or if you've already been here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. It takes just one little second and it greatly helps us, you know, just a little, just a little motion. Just one of these little, just one little, just like that. So all the more reason to come join us. Cause we've got visuals. We've got a little slideshow to go along with what we're talking about today. So, a lot of these topics and questions that I kind of put together were just kind of thoughts I had bouncing around in my head over the last couple of weeks here. So I'll kind of segue into each one and like why I thought this would be something interesting to talk about and kind of pick your brain on. So a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to what at the time was the latest episode of the Soul Savvy podcast, and they had on Matt, who's the owner of corporate who's the owner of corporate got him. I'm so tired. The owner of <laughs> corporate got him, uh, which is a boutique out of Cincinnati. Uh, to talk about their upcoming airship collaboration, which at this point is now in the past. Uh, it comes in this all over. What were, what would we call this? Is this teal or is this turquoise? More teal than turquoise, yeah? I, I think teal. Teal is a good one. All teal, Statue of Liberty-esque uh, colorway, as I've been seeing it. And he talked about how Nike, when they approached him about doing this collaboration, talked about how they were looking to reintroduce the airship silhouette by partnering with you know, like 10 or so boutiques and then kind of reintroducing it back into the market. This is on the heels of when the new beginnings pack came out in 2020. Um, mm -hmm. And it just kind of made me stop and think about when Adidas was relaunching the forum back in 2020 as well, actually. Mm -hmm. And part of their rollout method was to do all of those partnership collabs with all the boutiques as well. Politics, Bodega. I think Amma Manier social status did a pair as well, but you remember all the forums that were coming out at the time and big. you know, I was kind of trying to compare the two exactly to your point big. It was huge at the time, but it's felt like this year, at least all of the airship collaborations have been a little underwhelming or a little lackluster and probably 
haven't had the same effect and impact that Nike would have hoped that it would have had. And just curious, I've got my theories, but do you have any thoughts on maybe why that is? Why that strategy worked for Adidas and not for Nike? I mean, just off the top of my head, when I think of the forums, I mean, we had, I mean, the politics, you know, communities. Um, that was a big event, you mm-hmm. know, whenever they were, whenever, the, you know, they made that. Uh, I could be bigger names. Um, mm. Who was it? Uh, was it Bad Bunny? Bad Bunny? Um, Bad Bunny, yeah, did several forum collaborations. You know, really got a name, which I don't know how, uh, you know, in mainstream popular he is now, but I know that especially when those forum releases were coming mm-hmm. out, he was, I mean, top three biggest names that you can have. Mm-hmm. Maybe that. I mean, if you don't have a, a big celebrity who's got millions and millions um, who might push it, or at least you're going to have other social media accounts who are going to capture mm-hmm. and want to post about them just because they know this, you know, like image is going to uh, get a lot of traction. Mm-hmm. Could be that. Yeah. What's what? What's got your tinfoil hat on? I didn't want to interrupt you. I didn't know if you had any other thoughts. Um, I think kind of like the two conclusions that I reached here is that I think at the time the forum was a better silhouette for the time than the airship is now because the forums, you remember when they reintroduced them, like 2020 was like almost the peak, if not the peak of dunk hype of like big chunky shoes. And shortly after that, you know, new balance brings back the five fifty. So I think the forum at the time kind of fit better in the lineup offering of what people were wearing. Whereas now, like, you know, airships, high top, like retro basketball sneakers, not really a big thing like these, you know, like Jordan ones are kind of in a lull right now for a lot of people. Good point. Um, point. New balance has been trying to push like the six fifties. So I think that's part of it is just that, you know, like, unfortunately I think right now is not the time for a high top shoe. Um, but I also think Adidas, when they were partnering with boutiques to bring back the forum kind of gave the boutiques a lot of leeway and opportunity to storytell on them. Whereas aside from this, this one that corporate did, which is like, you know, pretty out there for an airship, you know, like I think we talked about yeah, it when it came on cut, right? Exactly. We talked about it whenever this one was on whichever uh i guess it would have been the september releases episode that we did um we were like this is probably not for us but kudos to them for swinging for the fence on this one yeah um but i think prior to this a lot of the airship collaborations like i know we've talked about before haven't necessarily been collaborations they've just been exclusives like amma manier gets an exclusive Mm -hmm. airship that's just white and blue and says amma manier on the tongue and you're like oh why and they're like uh because it's Cause limited it's got their and you're name. like yeah um so i don't know i think that's part of it but probably less so because i think a lot of people aren't buying for the storytelling uh kind of like you and i probably are a little bit more inclined to do but i don't know i could i could kind of see where you're coming from uh now i mean with you saying that uh you know especially bringing up the album and year i get that a lot i think I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's a, a, a big population who are buying shoes specifically for storytelling who have that. But I do think that there are a lot of people, especially when it comes to collabs, they do want to feel some type of connection or resemblance to whatever celebrity or collab, you know, because I think a lot of people well, get into They want to know collection. why they did it. Yeah, they want to know yeah. why you made this. Yeah. Um, And I mean, who knows? Nike... You know, they they may be, you know, kind of, you know, back in that era where they're like, you're going to buy it because it's Nike. You're going to buy it yeah. because of the collab. You don't really care, you know, what it is. Um, but I also think that a lot of people were buying in, in that instance was more of, of resale value rather than just mm. it's got the swoosh or it has the name to it. I think it was like. I don't really care what Travis Scott is putting out. It's going to call it's immediate resale value is, you know, quadrupling. Um, But I, I do that specific name out there, not to interrupt you, but just because you do that specific name out there, isn't it kind of strange that Travis Scott hasn't done one. You would think like if they were trying to 
reintroduce a silhouette and bring it back, you would use like your biggest marketing vehicle that you've got, which is Travis Scott. Yeah. I mean, maybe they were trying to use him for the trainers um, and didn't want to maybe try to confuse uh, some people with, a, okay. you know, the air trainer and the airship. I'll hear you out. Sure. Um, Too much air. I hey. can't put air in everything, Travis. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It is it is interesting. It, like you said, I, I think just the silhouette as well. I think a lot mm. of people will see a high top and they're like, well, I'll just get a Jordan 1, you know, yeah. like, um, mm-hmm. or they'll probably look at this and be like, I like blazers better or I like yeah. dunk highs better. Yeah. So I, I just think there's too many different high tops that if you were itching mm. for one, you would just be like, yeah, I'll just get insert other high top here a that, quote unquote classic you know exactly and not that yeah. the airship's not but it's kind of a it's a more like deeper knowledge classic rather than like a yeah. more universal classic i would say yeah exactly and i mean like sure blazers very much especially you know the high tops classic however i don't really think there's a lot of people who are like hype on yeah. blazers uh you know yeah. a, a, outside you know i'm sure there's a lot of blazer heads out there shout Blaze out our up. friend vanessa She's the one blazing for everyone here. Hey, there you go. Yeah. So anyways, just some interesting thoughts on this specific shoe. Um, it's funny that I feel like I almost had to go to this other podcast. Not like it couldn't be ours, but like I, in terms of like <laughs> why it, I feel like it wasn't on the sneakers page and I didn't maybe look that close or like a lot of sneaker news, but like, I feel like I had to really dig to find out why this colorway, like what they were going for here. And the best mm. answer I could find that Matt from corporate was like, we just wanted to try something really different. And I'm like, Oh, okay. You did like, I, yeah, I kept waiting for some tie back to the statue of Liberty. Cause that's the only thing I see when I look at it. Um, but they're like, no, we just want to do something really different. And I'm like, Oh, you did. Did it need to be <laughs> just, right? I don't know. It, it, so it is interesting. It's a statement shoe for sure. It, I mean, but if anything, that just reinforces kind of like your thought process of, not the fruit, but just the straw. You know, we kind of hey, got pretty oh. close to the color there. Pretty close to the color match. Conspiracy confirmed. Opens up StockX. How much are these going for? Maybe <laughs> I need one to match my straw. <laughs> Was there a straw that accompanied these? I want the straw. That's very much a, I feel like a Kodak Black thing. Mm. He would he would match his outfit. He would see that. To that the, down to the straw? Cup of the straw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out Kodak, Kodak Black. Thing. Come on the show whenever you want. Whatever. I'd love to have well, you. Yeah, we'll we'll make room. We'll figure out the computer issues. Maybe <laughs> for Kodak. we can't do it for ourselves, but for Kodak, we'll clear it. We'll clear it. All right. Next topic that I've got lined up here, sticking on that theme of collaborations, something common else I've kind here. of been. Yeah, it's going to be a common theme about pretty much all these, but something else I've been thinking about, and I know I've got a bit of a reputation on this show over the past four years of being a a stand of collaborations a simp for collaborations, if you will. But every now and then you've got to start to wonder is too much of a good thing, a bad thing. And starting to wonder are too many collaborations, a bad thing. Like whenever a brand or a partner does too many, does it make the collaborations less special? So I don't mean to pick on union here, but I absolutely am singling out union here because they are one of the prime examples of like having several Nike collaborations per year at this point. Um, and I'll tell you just kind of my thoughts on it is that I don't so much mind the different collaborations on the different silhouettes, but I think when they do multiple pack collaborations within a year, Mm, it kind of a pack of collaborations. I feel like in some ways can take away from the specialness of a collaboration. So like, but it's a bit subjective here. So like when they do the Jordan one pack, right. You know, like, that's a good time because you want the black toes and I want the blue toes. So it's like, had they only done one, someone would have been sad. But then like, I look at the passport pack and I'm just like, kind of feels like, you know, like just pick one, just like tell your story on one and let it be the hero product rather than like now all three kind of feel like a little bit down. Whereas if it was just one, that would be the one, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I think especially when it comes to packs, I feel like there's so many times where you'll look at it and you'll go, I like one of these. I like two of these. One of these is really good. Two of these. Okay. Mm -hmm. The rest I'm kind of not feeling. 
Um, so I do think that when you when you do a pack, it does kind of take away from the meaningful or the importance of one. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think also just doing so many with one brand in a year, you kind of do saturate the market and you just, when you hear, Hey, this new collab is coming out. You're kind of like, okay, well we got one like two months ago. Right. So exactly. um, I think we had those same thoughts. I think everyone had the same thoughts when it came to like the Yeezys, you Mm -hmm. know, they would release one. You're like, is this, so this is just a different shade of blue the color of the month. Yeah. You know, um, I think the same thing with Travis Scott's, I think at mm-hmm. some point, I think we stopped, people stopped getting very just like, Oh sweet. Because it was just like, Oh, it's just another well, brown collab. Yeah. You know? And, it's like, and okay, that's a cool. perfect example of like when he did the air maxes or when he did the trainers that it was like, Oh, I don't need two air maxes and I don't need two trainers. Like, just pick the best one and put it out, and I think it will be yeah. more significant than doing multiples every time. I think so too. Or you know, I think the what probably will be the best example of a collab pack and how to do it. It will be um, the off white top ten. Yeah. Um, I think that will just be the prime example of how to do a pack, how to do it, you know, and, and that's been it. There's, there's not Mm -hmm. a top 20, a top 10 part two, you know, it was just that it told its story. You could see the craftsman and like the importance of each shoe. Mm -hmm. Um, and it felt good rather than almost kind of like, I think where we are now, kind of what you were saying with, with collabs is like the pack or collab start to just feel like an obligation. You know, it's kind of like, it's almost like the same thing when, an artist puts out an album and they have put out be like, Hey, I'm just releasing this to get out of my contract. And that album yeah. comes out and you're like, this is terrible. Right. Or when I, they're trying to I rack understand. up the stream count and it's like an 18 track album. And you're like, come yeah. on, man, 10 would have been fine. 10 would have yeah. been enough. Exactly. You, I don't even think you finished production on this one. Um, <laughs> it almost feels like, especially now with, um, with certain collabs or things like that, you'll come out and you're like, what are we doing here? Why, why yeah. are we, why are we doing this? This doesn't feel like a shoe that we're used to. It doesn't even, and it also does feel off because I feel like the explanation and in detail of a shoe is not like, Hey, we're doing this different thing because of these reasons, or mm-hmm. this made us feel this way. Or when we spoke to this person, we got this story. It literally is just like, yep, we did it. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely like some interesting, uh, sort of not to hit the, you know, um, not to use the local name here, but there's some interesting politics behind it, which is funnily <laughs> enough how sneaker politics got their name. Hey. Uh, but just, yeah, I mean like, and to, sorry to keep picking on union here for a minute, but you know, like the air Jordan one that they just did like the woven one, mm-hmm. love it or hate it. Again, they did something really different on it and I could appreciate yeah. that rather than like the AJ one KO lows that they did earlier this year that were like yeah. clean, but it's just like, why? Like what, why are we doing this? You know? Exactly. It, it really just feels like did Nike just buy their name? Cause Nike was just like, we got this shoe. I don't think yeah. it's going to sell on its own, but if we just make it a collab. Well, and that's the know? thing is I imagine there's some sort of pressure there that it's like, if Nike wants them to help push a silhouette, um, oh, you yeah. can say no, but you got to consider what that does to your relationship with the brand next time you want a silhouette, you know? So, oh, exactly. Yeah. You said I'm no sure to this. So I, I'm going to say no to this, or I'm going to say no to your next, you know, right. creative, um, yeah. input. Uh, and then who knows? I mean, it, it could even get to a point where, you know, you just get so big that you're just like, whatever, you know, Yeah. if yeah. we sell, you know, if we sell out like we are used to, cool. If we don't, it's just more money, you know. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, that's been that's been happening lately with the um, is it the undefeated Air Forces? The sort of like uh, patent leather all over oh, patchwork yeah. panels on those, which like those are in the outlets now for like under a hundred bucks. It's just you know like again, I I don't mean to to uh 
to rag on them. I don't really know the story behind those, but yeah. also like seems like most people, if there is a story, do not care for it. And it's just, and then, I mean, there could even be, you know, the caveat to that where, you know, Nike or Adidas or, you know, whoever it is, they reach out to this um, company to do a collaboration and they're like, Hey, you don't have to do anything. We literally have all yeah. the marketing done. You don't have to like take time to design the shoe and have input. We have everything mm. mocked up, ready to go. We literally just need your name. We, you know, yeah. we just want the collab and, you know, to a company that just, I mean, that, that's literally done being like, Hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm writing you a check. You do not have yeah. to do. I, all you got to do is your social media obligations. And we've seen good. that plenty of times, like, and to go back to the last topic of like, you know, the boutique exclusive airships where oh, it's yeah. like, I don't think Abba and year is spending three weeks in Oregon to debate the right shade of blue on the airship. You know, like <laughs> I think they're probably getting yeah. told like, we've got an opportunity. If you want an exclusive, we need to move some inventory and they go, yeah, sure. We can move it, you know? So. Yeah. And I, and I, I think know. it is a good point. Um, kind of how you had that you had of, you know, do you say no, you know, right. to it for, integrity you know of, mm -hmm. of what your you know your brand name is or is it just like well i can't say no to the boss right because like you said next time i am looking to do a collaboration or or want to make this huge innovative change mm -hmm. they're gonna you know use that chip uh, yeah so that you know it, it, it would be very interesting i mean i think that's always been something that like has been very uh, interesting and intriguing to the two of us of wanting to have more insight into that collaboration and that back and forth. And like, tell me all of the really yeah. fun and like very positive things of doing this collab and what that process yeah. is. And then also though, like tell me the kind of like underbelly side of it, like, yeah. uh, you know, aspect too. I think there are a lot of people, especially if you are, very fascinated like someone who is like you who is like i love storytelling and like all these very very minor details i want every aspect of the mm -hmm. shoe to have been thought of um mm -hmm. i think you want to hear both sides of that you know i think i yeah. think that's the interesting part of collaborations is to hear you know what's the good and what's the bad um probably not gonna hear those i was just about to say it's like for anyone listening who works at a sneaker boutique and wants to come on our show and spill all the dark secrets of the sneaker industry and you know put your career on the line we'd love to have you yeah we'll cut we'll cut it we'll cut it it'll be for us the red light yeah. means off <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see it live on youtube right now i mean it's not live live it's just yeah it's actually it's a delay there's a delay. yeah it's it's a stream delay there it's a private channel our moderator will uh he'll take care of it he'll, he'll pull it down it. he'll pull the clip don't worry don't worry yeah no she's quick she's yeah. quick really good really good on it all right last topic that i've got lined up for us here i like this which one. i don't know i don't know that we've ever actually discussed this in depth which kind of threw me yeah. for a loop but it does kind of go along the lines of our whole theme of the episode here so a mm -hmm. little bit of context here uh last week or week before Joe Fresh Goods took to Instagram earlier in the week to post um, his upcoming collaboration with New Balance on the 650 High silhouette. Um, and I'm sure you've heard the story by now, but it's inspired by the original Michael Jordan Jumpman photo, which inspired later Nike to recreate it for the Jumpman logo, in which Michael Jordan is actually wearing a pair of New Balances here. Uh, right. In his Instagram post, Joe said, Joe said that they merged, quote, merged a little history imagination a few easter eggs different materials and special packaging for this one uh but in quote from my uh just looking at the sneakers i would say you wouldn't really know it i don't really see it um so it got me kind of to wondering and he posted these like on monday of the week and then it was like going to be released in chicago in person only limited to 500 pairs i think it was cool. um and so now here's here's the let me give you the 24 hour news cycle that I caught myself in. I see Ooh. Joe Fresh Goods post these on Instagram, being somewhat of an unapologetic Joe Fresh Goods simp. I go, hype, hype. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be good. Uh, and then, kind of quickly sobered up, and I was like, 
I love the source of inspiration that they're pulling from, mm -hmm. but where is it? Like, wh where is it? What am I looking at here? And so it kind of made me start to think and ask myself, did a sneaker ever grow on you once you heard the story or here's a couple mm. examples, saw the packaging and marketing, found out they were going to be limited, learned how they were going to be released, et cetera, separate from the in hand or on feet pictures, right? Cause we're all a little bit guilty of, you see the first leaks and you're like, eh, I don't know too much about these, yeah. but then you see them on feet or in hand. And you're like, okay, these are actually kind of good, but I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about not based on how it looks. Once you found out more details about the sneaker, did it kind of grow on you? Mm, I would say, yeah. So the first one, I think the first one that came to mind was, is probably the core lines. Okay. Um, I remember when I first saw them, I was like, okay, you know, sure. It's a, you know, okay. It's a dunk, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say for sure, like my infatuation with them, uh, definitely came with like, obviously the huge limited, um, you know, the, the characters on the laces, mm -hmm. uh, those, which kind of grew, um, also, might be weird to say, but the pigeon dunks. Um, oh, I mean, definitely a shoe that like visually you can very clearly tell what it's referencing. But of all the sneakers, that one's got a story to it. That's like in the top five or top ten of all sneaker yeah. stories of sneaker so, history. Yeah. So I hearing, see where you're coming from. Hearing that made me be like, this shoe is like, I see the shoe and I'm like, I really yeah. like it. It's dope. Yeah. It's very clean. Okay. It looks really good. But then you hear the story yeah. and everything that like behind the shoe and the moment that that shoe was mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And like, it just is a, like a heartfelt shoe. You know, I see it. And I'm just like, I, I'm just like unbelievably attached to yeah. the shoe for someone who has spent probably, I think maybe 14 hours in New York city. Yeah. Yeah. But I felt, I feel like, you know, I got the NY connection to it. Yeah. You know, I get, I get what you're saying. You don't want to categorize it as grow on you. Cause you were already appreciative of how it looked, but it gave you a deeper appreciation for the shoe. Yes. So I, I, I don't really think I, I, I what you're saying. I don't think I ever had a shoe that I would say I looked at it and was like, I don't like it. And then I hear the story behind it. And I'm like, Oh, now I love this shoe because yeah. to me, if I don't, if I look at a shoe and I'm not into it, the storytelling, mm -hmm. I'll be like, oh, I can appreciate the shoe. I understand mm -hmm. now what you did. But if I don't look at the shoe and go, I like it, the storytelling is not going to make it be something I'm going to I'm going to put more into. You know, I yeah. have to kind of look at it and be interested in it. Gotcha. But I do think for me personally, the storytelling can definitely elevate that shoe. Mm -hmm. um, even though, like I said, like especially when you have like the pigeons. When you look at the shoe, it's nothing crazy and out there. You know, it's a lot of very just kind of like muted colors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks really good. It looks really clean. Yeah. But then everything behind the shoe just, to me, makes it one of those, makes it a grail 100%. Oh, absolutely. I think it's got to um, be on probably everyone's list. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. as the storytelling, storyboard <laughs> fanatic. Yeah. How, what time should I, should I put on a, on a timer? Should I, should I, should I keep how you? Much, how much time do we have? The first half of the episode was 30 minutes. And this one question, my resort will be the next 30 minutes. Yeah, for sure. Um, listen, I am like, there are shoes on the shelf behind me that are from this category. Okay. <laughs> it's a very obvious. Yes. Like so many of these Louisiana sneaker collaborations are not shoes that I would wear and have not worn since I got them. Mm -hmm. But the story and significance of it for me is a big thing, but getting out of Louisiana, cause that's always going to be a soft spot. Like uh, my picture is tiny. I'm trying to tell here, hang on the social status, chocolate milk dunk mids. Okay. Right. Fair. Yeah. Not a shoe that I wear all that often. Kind of been mm -hmm. thinking about selling it recently to be real with you, but all of the extras that went with it. And I do like the details and materials on it. And the web campaign rollout that they did with it, which I think actually won a Webby award, um, sold me on it. 
Like they just did such a good job of hyping it up and marketing it and kind of just showing it that mm-hmm. it made me want to get on board with the moment. Like it's very much like a, I wanted to be part of this moment and I want to have these to kind of remember everything that went into it. Not so much like a, I can't wait to get these and wear them all the time sort of thing. Yeah. Would you say it's like a, like a FOMO? Mm. I think I, I get closer to thinking about it as FOMO if it's a release that's going to be limited. If it's okay. limited and I'm not in love with how it looks, but it's limited, that will start to, <laughs> the brands know what they're doing. Well, That'll start limited. to twist my arm. And I'll be like, oh, but hang on, there's not that many of them. Um, so that, I mean, that can twist it a little bit, but I mean, I've gotten better in recent years about like, not necessarily getting caught up in the FOMO of like, this is quote unquote, a big sneaker release. Like the, um, the SB dunks that came out, see how bad I'm getting lately that I don't even remember the names of them. Hold please. Uh, what's his name? The Utos, uh, named after the skater that won. I think it was the first, uh, skateboarding competition at the Olympics in what year was that? That was just last year. I think 2022, that was the first year, Maybe year before it was the same year they did the paradunks, guys. I'm so off it tonight, but uh, the Uto dunks that came out like earlier this month. Do you remember seeing them uh, white with like the bluish gray panels, the little feather detail on the back, like the olive green drab swoosh on them? Ah, that sounds so familiar. Uh, hold please. Let's see if this breaks the whole thing. Hold please. And hey, yes, these. yes, yes. So this was very much like a okay. Clean sneaker, probably would wear it, but do I just want to get it because it's the hot thing right now and I'm really caught up in the moment? Um, I'm patting myself on the back for getting better about it because I didn't enter a single raffle for these. I didn't try for them on sneakers. Um, I actually missed the sneakers release because I was in a meeting, but thanks work. Um, (laughs) So I think in the past, I've been way more guilty of it's the thing going on at the moment, especially if like I'm guilty of being in a discord group or watching a youtube live stream where they're doing a live cop for a big release happening and like the chat's rolling and you just so want to be a part of the moment Um, and and it's so easy now i mean it's everything's on your phone or you you know i mean like it's so easy yeah there's that and then i'll peek behind the curtain a little bit it's so easy and it's so easy for me to justify because i go even if i don't want them that much content for the podcast for you the viewers you go look at our youtube go look at (laughs) damn well should be go look at our youtube channel right now all of our top videos unboxings by a mile by that's what people want to see um so it's very easy for me to justify like i might not love this but it's kind of interesting and it's a big moment and i can get content out of it yeah sure Um, where's the loss exactly yeah well in the, in recent years, it's been that they don't resell for mm. that much, and so I actually will lose some money on making it. But it's like I'm making content for relatively cheap. I don't know where this conversation's gone, but anyways, <laughs> um, all that to say, a good example I chose was not these 650s, but when Joe Fresh Goods and New Balance did the 550 from last year, or year before the conversations amongst us. Oh yeah, um, I a, a very similar like all cream colored shoe, but all of the campaign and marketing that went with it and what it stood for the, um, Oh shit. I'm blanking right now. The ERG, the employee resource group at new balance. That's like meant to represent and lift up, uh, black voices and creatives and designers within the brand. I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head, but, um, just kind of highlighting that and calling attention to that. I thought was so cool that I was like, okay, I want these doesn't hurt that I'm a Joe fresh, good simp, but Hey, there you go. The uh, five fifty is such an interesting. I had to look up. I, I don't know. I think it's just a, one of their generic releases, but it's just like a white and green. I have no idea. Oh, I I'm not a big fan of any of them, but just a like a. Oh, you're talking about a different release that you're a fan. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Just a gr. Yeah. But I was just you yeah. know I was like I had to put the five fifty in my head. Back in um, your head, yeah. Yeah, and I can so, see that. All that to say to go back to this pair, I just was so. So wanting, like, it kind of blows my mind 
that I don't, I can't think of any other release that's come out. That's kind of told that story because it's a weird part of both brands history, right? You know, like new balance doesn't want to tell a story that gets them in hot water with Nike. Nike doesn't want to acknowledge that the original photo he was wearing new balance. So like, I love that Joe fresh goods is the guy who's going to do it and try to pull the stunt of doing it, but it's all white shoe and it has JFG on it. And that's, that's about it. I don't know. You know, maybe I need to watch some unboxing videos to see if like there's anything else in the box that kind of alludes to it a little bit more, but it's, but here's the thing. If it's in the box, that's not right. You know, that's not what I'm putting on my feet, you know? Right. Would be but it cool. kind of all goes back to, I think what we were saying kind of with the exclusives where it's like, it almost more feels like, I don't think this is the case with this one, but it kind of could make you see like the brand has the shoot is like, can you come up with a story for this? Like it's yeah. all white with suede panels. Like you could take it probably almost anywhere. Yeah. Um, Not to mention that he wasn't wearing the six fifties in that photograph. He's wearing a different shoe, a different uh-oh. new balance model. Well then what are we even doing here? Exactly. That's what like, I'm saying. Like, I mean, I've had shoes grow on me and this is one that I'm like, I would love to on paper. If you don't see the shoe, you don't see the shoe and you just get the design brief and you're like, Joe fresh goods, new balance. And you're like, okay, already there for already, it. already referencing <laughs> some deep sneaker history about like a little bit of like behind the scenes with the brands. And you're like, Oh, that's kind of even something else. And Michael Jordan, you're like, okay, yeah, I would be there for it. Like on paper seems like it. Yeah, what are, we, um, what are we waiting on? But then it comes out, and you're like, oh, this feels like he pitched it, and they're like, we're on board with it, but don't do anything that makes it look like what that's what we're doing here, you know? I mean, and then the fact he's like, yo, uh, so, you know, there was a New Balance shoe in the original photo. He's like, oh, is it this one? No, it's it's no, it's it's a different silhouette. So actually. why are you telling the story with this silhouette? Because uh, New Balance wants to sell 650s. Because uh, that's what they're doing. Turns out, yeah. Turns out, uh, sneaker companies that start with N are trying to push dead <laughs> high tops. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, very guilty of a sneaker has grown on me, not based on how it looks, just because of something else going on with it. Mm-hmm. Last one, I'll throw Fair. at you the A6 and Concepts Coca. The ones, uh, the green ones that come in the box that looks like the box. The box is what sold me on those. I wanted this so bad. I still remember whenever you got up and you you were telling me, like, no, you you had to go on a boat. I'm like, yeah, but Ryan, you didn't go on the, like, all I could think of my head. Of course I didn't go on the boat. (laughs) Yeah. But you, you just, I know that was how the whole that went. (laughs) But the box, man. It's money. It looks like money. I got rid of those within the last year. And I just missed looking at the box on the shelf, but. To be fair, okay. I mean, I would say that was what I remember hearing you tell me about that, and I remember just being like, "I I don't get it, I don't I yeah. don't I don't I don't get it." And then I saw the shoe and I was like, "It's actually not bad. It's actually a pretty good shoe. It's a good shoe, very wearable uh, shoe." Yeah. yeah, I was like, "Oh." And then, to be fair, the box was, the box was really the cool. box was the box was maybe the best part of it. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it. That's going to be our episode for the week. Do us a favor, if you made it this far in the episode. First of all, thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on Spotify, this will be our little uh, poll of the week. Did a sneaker ever grow on you? Not based on how it looks. Let us know. If you're listening on Spotify, just yes or no. But if you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Let us know yes or no. And if yes, which shoe was it? What was the story? What did it for you? I want to read some of those comments. Yeah, we want to know. We want to know. Maybe we'll also throw it on the IG poll. I don't know. We might get Mm. absolutely silly with it. Ooh, get silly. But I'll, I got to cut you off. I don't want us to get TOS there. They got the they got the copyright strike. Listen, that's too accurate. You're singing too well. Soldier, soldier would he, he would he would. We were uh okay. We dogs. One more thing, and then I'll tell you the story. Uh, if you've made it this far of the episode and you're not already, please make sure you're following us wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're watching on YouTube, that you're subscribed. Um, I'll tell you this. Actually, I'll tell you this other story off the air. It's it's not related to this at all. Um. Let's go ahead. Let's roll the socials because we didn't do that yet. On that note, you can find all of our links on our website at shoepodcast.com. If you want to see some pretty pictures and reels, you can find us on Instagram at shoepodcast. Similar content over on TikTok at shoepodcast. As we already said, we are on YouTube. Get this. 
at Shoe Podcast. It's going to be a recurring theme here. Uh, last but not least, oh, the Patreon. Poor little Patreon. Mm. $2 a month. Go ahead and support us if you want to. It helps, <laughs> helps with all the hosting costs of doing a podcast, really. Rexing. Rexing. Yeah. Uh, Tanner, before we got out, get out of here, you got anything you want to leave the people with? Oh, man. Um, Stretch. And drink water. And drink water. Um, and you know, I think, you know, we preach drinking that water during the hot summer days, but don't lay off during yeah. the winter. Okay. Just cause yeah. it's cold and lotion. I'm sure I'm going to be talking oh, about yeah. that. Oh yeah. Lotion up. Take care of your skin. You only get one. <laughs> well, it kind of like it regrows. I guess it does. Regrow. It's the largest organ. What, what if it regrows? How do you have like, shouldn't you just have perfect skin all the time? All right. He's onto us folks. L'Oreal get out of the chat. He's onto us. He's he's learned too much. He said too much. We already oh, uncovered the skin. truth on kids on the moon. He's now going after big big skin. New skin's actually just old skin. It just flips over. Uh oh. He's heard too much. He said too much. <laughs> Cut the mic. All right. Thank you everyone for checking out another episode of Shoot Podcast. Like we said, hopefully back next week with an interview episode. Going to be a good one. Hope you're here for it. I'm your co-host Ryan Landry. I'm co-host Tanner Young. Hope the outro rolls. Okay, bye.